Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Lingraj A. Hadimani, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering Autonomous Institution based uh, in Kolapur, Maharashtra. In um, I welcome you all for KIT's e content development cell. So, in today's lesson, we are going to basically study about uh, various aspects of file. So, let us uh, uh, go through the objectives of today's lesson. The first one is to learn the various file access methods that we are going to study uh, what are the various uh, methods for accessing the files. Then we also study uh, the various advantages and disadvantages of each of these file access methods. And the third objective is to understand the file directory structure that how a directory looks like or what is its structure. So, these are the three things we are going to learn from today's lecture. So, let us understand different file types. We come across various files in day to day life. We deal with so many different types of files. Uh, we deal with uh, word files, we, we deal with the music files, video files, audio files and images, photographs. So, let us go through one by one. There is an executable file which ends with .exe or .bin. Basically, it is a ready to run machine language program. Then comes object files. Generally, they end with .obj or .o. They, these are basically the compiled files, but not yet linked. Then comes source code files that is the programs which we write using any programming languages such as C, C++, Java and end with the extension .c, .cc, .java or something like this. Then comes batch files. So, they generally end with uh, .bat or .sh. Then these are generally the commands to the command interpreter. Then comes text files. They generally end with uh, .txt or .doc, um, basically used to contain various uh, uh, textual information. Then comes word processor. They end with uh, .doc, .docx, then .text, .rtf. <coughs> these are various word processor formats. Then comes various library files that is they end with .lib or .a, .dll, etc. These are libraries of routines for programmers, various programmers. Then uh, there are certain files which are only read only files or basically meant for printing purpose or just weaving purpose. So, they, they end with .ps dot pdf dot jpg these are basically ascii or binary files in a format for printing or vv then comes archive files basically they are used for storing for a longer duration of time suppose if you want to store certain things for long duration of files then you can arch archive them with the file extension dot arc or dot zip or dot tar these are nothing but the related files grouped into one file uh, sometimes compressed for archiving or storage purpose. Then comes multimedia files, various um, images, audio, video, these kind of files, they all comes under multimedia category. So, they end uh, with the various um, extensions that is mpeg, .mu, .rm, .mp3, .avi. These are nothing but binary files containing audio or video information. Then let us understand the various um, access methods, file access methods. I mean, how exactly we can access a file. So, the first method is sequential access. The second one is direct access. It is also called as relative access. The third one is indexed access. So, let us understand one by one what is it, what they mean and what is the major difference between them. In sequential access, the information in the file is processed in order that is one by one, okay, one record after the other. So, even writing also done in the same way, <coughs> reading is also done on the same way. In direct access, basically it is a fixed length logical record that allows the program to read and write rapidly in no particular order. That is you can directly go to one particular point or one particular location to access 
okay to read the content or to write the content in that location so that is why it is called as direct access then comes an index access where a particular record can be accessed by an index so like in our textbooks uh, in the initial pages you can see a index so there is a topic name and then there is a page number so directly we go to that particular we identify the page number and directly go to that page by going i mean by understanding the page number so that's that's the same concept here <coughs> a particular record can be accessed by its index the index is nothing but the address of a record in the file then coming to sequential access suppose if you want to move a sizable chunk of the file it is necessary to insert a new record you need to move a, you need to move a sizable sizable chunk of the file suppose if you want to insert in between then you need to move that okay portion of the file continuously so you need to move a lot of content <coughs> in order to access a block in case of direct access in order to access a block there is no need to traversing all the blocks present before directly you can go to that particular location without traversing okay uh, all the records which are uh, previous to the record what we are searching okay so that is why it is called as direct access then then comes index access here to find a record in the file we first search the index and directly then by the help of the pointer we we access the file directly okay then um, sequential access is suitable for applications that require access to all the records in a file in a specific order so if you want to access all the records starting from the beginning or from the beginning to the starting then it is preferable to go for sequential access in case of direct access the files can be immediately accessed decreasing the average access time so the best part of direct access is the access time will be drastically reduced because you don't have to traverse everything before reaching to the point of access rather you can directly go to that location and start accessing so this is the greatest advantage of direct access in case of indexed access searching in a large database becomes very difficult and easy uh, sorry searching in a large database uh, large database became very quick and easy but we need to have some extra space in the memory to store the index value the the, the disadvantage of index is you need to store some extra information here because you need to store the index information as well as in the memory so first uh, you you have to go to that particular you have to go to that index table for search the index then go to that particular file so again it's bit more time consuming process so let us understand how exactly uh, they work so in case of sequential access so read next write next reset then no read after the last record uh, last write that is rewrite in case of direct access here n represents relative block number you can see here read n write n then directly position to n then read next and write next so directly you can you can go to one particular block number in case of direct access then you can start reading the next record or you can start writing the next record okay then even you can rewrite the nth record it is possible in case of direct access then comes file access methods that's what we are discussing right now so you can see the diagram here okay so we already know a hard disk is divided hard disk is divided into different different tracks and each track is divided into different sectors generally one sector is equal to 512 bytes that is one block is a, is also equal to 512 bytes so you can see in in case of sequential access we are going uh, block by block or sector by sector in sequential way 
okay however in case of direct access we, can, we we don't follow this rather we directly go to any block we want to access so suppose if you want to simulate this we want to simulate the sequential access on a direct access file this is how it can be done you can see here in case of sequential access okay we just say reset then read next or write next however if you want to simulate this on a direct access instead of saying reset this will be cp is equal to 0 then read next if you want to read next then it, it can be mentioned here as read cp okay then cp is equal to cp plus 1 because it is a sequential it is a sequential access so you read one record now the next record you are going to read the next one is the immediate the following what follows the, the current record similarly if you want to write something then it is write cp then again cp is equal to cp plus 1 you can clearly see here uh, in case of sequential access we are going to begin from the first record however in case of direct access you do not have to begin from the first record you can directly go to that particular location so this is called as indirect access then comes um, indexed or relative files you can see here on the left side of the diagram you can see a index file and the right side there is a relative file so if you want to go to that particular file first uh, we need to search in the index file so there you can see the index file contains two things one is a last name and logical record number so last last name of uh, that person is smith then you get the logical record number through that number that acts as a pointer then through that number you can go to that particular relative file in order to read or perform write or any other file operations okay so this is how uh, indexed file works so let us we have till now we have studied various file access methods so let us understand uh, we will try to answer this um, multiple choice question so for a direct access file four options are given the first one is there are restrictions on on the order of reading and writing the second option is there are no restrictions on the order of reading and writing third one is access is restricted permission wise the fourth option is access is not rest restricted permission wise so think a while and 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 try to answer correctly what can be the perfect answer so the answer is you can see here there are no restrictions on the order of reading and writing that is why it is called as direct access file so now let's let us understand the directory structure you can see here on the left side of the diagram and on the right side of the diagram you can see two directory structures okay uh, what is basically a directory it is a container that is used to contain folders and files a directory can contain multiple folders and files each folder can contain multiple files so what why we need a directory because it, it helps us to organize the files and folders in a hierarchical manner you can see there is a clear hierarchy uh, uh, directory in d1 then the next one is folders then folders are given uh, then comes the files f1 f2 f3 so you can see multiple directories are having multiple files so that is a way we uh, i mean directories helps us to organize the files both the directory structure and file structure actually resides on the disk so even the directory structures are stored on the disk so in today's classes we discussed about different file access methods and differences so three types of file access methods we discussed today one is sequential and the one is indexed and the third one is direct access uh, we also 
compared them we we try to understand the advantages and advantages disadvantages of each of these then also we saw the file directory structure in in next lecture uh, uh, we will study about uh, free space management and directory implementation with this uh, i would like to thank thank each and everyone for patient listening thank you very much